and welcome to Ivory Blush Roses. My name is Lisa and I'm so grateful that you have joined me today. Here's a sneak peek of a project that I have been working on. It's a cathedral window project that my mom started decades ago that I recently found in a box of unfinished projects. I'll be sharing this in more detail in the future. My tools on this project have been pretty simple. I have a little fabric sewing basket that I made several years ago, a spool of cotton quilting thread, a thimble, a betweens quilting needle, a pair of embroidery scissors, and a little tin of applique pins. While I've been working on this project, I found myself wanting a little pin cushion in which to put the tiny betweens needle so that I didn't lose it. I've made a lot of pin cushions in the past, about 40 of them. They range in size from 6 inches in diameter down to about 3 inches in diameter. But when I'm working on a simple project that involves just one or two needles and a spool of thread, it's nice to have a tiny one that I can tuck in my little basket while I'm working. It acts as a space to rest my needle quickly when I need to step away, and it's far better than sticking the needle in the top of the thread spool where it can get lost underneath the label. So today I'm making a tiny pincushion about one and three quarter inches in diameter. To form the base, I used the metal ends from a package of refrigerator rolls. If you want to make a larger pincushion, I have used the ends of juice concentrate cans, canning jar lids, or old CDs. You'll need two bases to work with, a pair of scissors, a small scrap of felt, a scrap of cloth for the top, as well as a needle, strong thread, and a small amount of wool roving and some embroidery thread or pearl cotton that coordinates with your fabrics. For the thread, I used cotton quilting thread on this small pincushion because that's what I had handy, but a double length of nylon beading thread would probably be a better choice. Once my supplies were assembled, the next step was cutting out the felt base. I'd recommend cutting your fabric with regular fabric scissors rather than embroidery scissors as I did. Trim the felt a little over half an inch larger in diameter than the metal base. You want it to be able to wrap around at least a quarter of an inch to the center. Next, using a doubled thread with a knot in the end, make a running stitch with stitches about one quarter inch long all around the perimeter. Place the base inside the felt with the flat side against the felt and then pull up the running stitches. Try to keep the metal base centered in the circle. Once you have it adjusted nice and tight, secure your thread but don't cut it. Using the same thread, stitch through the pleat on the opposite side and then stitch through a pleat on the near side and work in that pattern all the way around the circle making sure to catch each pleat in a stitch. You may need to stitch through a few of the pleats twice to make sure all the pleats are stitched down. Once the felt is held nice and snug all the way around, fasten off your thread and trim it. Now your base is complete and you can set it aside while we work on the top. Choose the fabric for the top. For a pin cushion, you want a fabric with a loose enough weed so the needle can pierce it easily but not too loose so that it will stretch or fray too much. I originally thought I was going to use a lovely piece of textured silk linen mix, but it was too loose and stretchy and I didn't think it would hold up well. Instead, I chose a piece of linen scrap with a floral print on it. It coordinated very well with the rest of my sewing implements and I chose to use just a green leafy portion of it rather than the floral. Cut out a circle of this top fabric that's about one and a half inches larger all the way around than your metal base. If you want a taller pin cushion, cut it two inches wider. Fold the circle in half or quarters and trim up to even the edges. If your fabric is a loose weave like this linen, I highly recommend running a machine stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the edge to help keep it unraveling. 
I did not do this and I did have to restitch my running stitches in a couple of spots. Once you have your circle cut out, cut a long length of doubled thread and thread your needle knotting the thread at the ends. And stitch a running stitch just as you did for the felt base about a quarter inch away from the edge with stitches about a quarter of an inch long. To help keep the knotted end from pulling through a loose weave fabric, slip the needle through the knotted end before pulling the threads up to gather the top. This next step can be a bit fiddly, so take your time and be patient with it and it will all come together beautifully. Take a small amount of wool roving and roll it up into a tight ball and stuff it inside the top. I like my pin cushions to be nice and firm, so I add more wool and wrap it tightly. Snug up the threads a little, but allow enough room to fit the metal base inside on top of the stuffing. Then gently pull the gathering thread, tucking the wool roving in as needed until the top of the pin cushion is the size and shape that you want. If you want it thicker, loosen it up and add a bit more roving, or if it's too thick, open it up and remove some roving. Once happy with it, tighten it and secure with a knot, but don't trim it, and then stitch from pleat to pleat on opposite sides just as you did for the base. Work your way all around the pincushion until every pleat is secured. If you have a long length of thread left, do not trim it and you can use this for attaching the top to the base. I have gotten the question about how necessary it is to stitch every single pleat. Personally, I find that it helps the pincushion maintain its shape and makes it far easier to stitch the pincushion to the base in the next step. It also helps to smooth the fabric around the sides and keeps it from getting puckered. Now take the base and put the gathered side toward the gathered side of the pincushion and hold them snugly together. Using your needle that's threaded with the double length of thread, use a whip stitch to stitch the two pieces together working all the way around. This can be a bit fiddly, but keep checking to make sure the base is not sliding off to one side, and don't worry if it feels like you're stitching through a lot of the felt. As you pull your stitches tight, the felt will stretch and this will not be an issue. Once you reach the end, secure your thread and trim off the thread flush with the pincushion. The next step is to hide the join between the pincushion and the base. On a large pincushion, I often use a piece of ribbon or trim to cover this seam, but on a tiny pincushion like this, that can be a bit much. So I chose to do a feather stitch all the way around. I took some time to choose a coordinating thread that matched my fabrics well, and then I stitched a straight feather stitch all the way around knotting the thread off at the end and trimming it just as I did for the whip stitched seam. And there you have it, a tiny little pin cushion ready for you to use on your next sewing project. I think this pin cushion only took me about a half an hour to make, though I would allow more time if this is your first pin cushion. I'm really happy with the way it fits in my little kit and it keeps my needle safe and from getting lost when I have to step away from my stitching. If you make one of these tiny pincushions, I would love to know and hear how it went. Thank you so much for watching today. I wish you a beautiful day and happy stitching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.